This is PPI, Pro Player Insiders, offering you the inside scoop on professional athletes. Welcome to the PPI Show with your host, Dave Zotter. But I said when we started our show that this wasn't just an NFL show. That we wanted to talk about other sports, that we wanted to really get inside the heads of not just the athletes, but of the negotiations right now and the perilous financial times that we live in, which threaten the future of professional sports. And with that in mind, I do want to say something about the National Basketball Association because we just ended the most thrilling NBA season in memory. I mean, I needed a defibrillator at the end of every NBA Finals game. The playoffs were like a nonstop 40-day, 40-night soap opera in my house. And as the league, after unprecedented ratings in this last year, is swimming in cash, they're staring at a situation right now where we might not have professional basketball next year you think of all the storylines can Dallas repeat can LeBron develop a post game can Chris Bosh uh, develop some muscle tone all of these things that we want to see if they can come together we're not we might not be able to find out will Ricky Rubio make it in the NBA I want to know the answer to that question I'll even watch the T-Wolves to figure it out but it's all predicated on both sides coming to a deal and my concern is with David Stern. It really is. Because David Stern for 30 years has been the most profoundly successful commissioner arguably arguably in the history of professional sports. Now granted, he had a great deal of kismet coming in right when Magic Johnson, Larry Bird, and then Michael Jordan turned the NBA into the kind of sport that would show their, their finals games on tape delay to a sport with a global panache. But Stern is the one who did it. He took it from that second or even third tier to a global phenomenon. And in recent years, he has shown that he can take it to another level as well. And yet at the same time in recent years, a different Stern has emerged, and it's really not exactly pleasant. Now, fans in the Seattle area know what I'm talking about. The fans in Seatown did not want to spend $300 million on a new publicly funded stadium, and they lost their team. They are familiar with David Stern's vindictive side. But never has David Stern seemed as unbending, as isolated, or as arrogant as he does right now. Players are being warned in bizarre ways, complaining coaches are to be silenced, and negotiating partners like the NBA Players Association are seen as enemies. I want you to consider the recent report that just came out about David Stern at the NBA All-Star Game during All-Star Weekend. This was largely under wraps for several months, but he was speaking in a meeting with all the NBA stars. Imagine all the All-Stars in a room, all your heroes, and there's David Stern standing up on a podium, and he says to the players, I know where the bodies are buried in this league because I'm the one who buried them myself. Derek Rose afterwards said, it was shocking. I was taking off my gear and when he said that and I just stopped and thought, whoa, I couldn't believe that he said that. Another all-star who asked to be anonymous, maybe because he thought he might be the next body buried, said, I was shocked, just shocked. Then on April 7th, the NBA Referees Union announced that they were bringing complaints to the National Labor Relations Board because Stern had issued an obscene expression at them during negotiations. And according to the report, Stern stormed out of the meeting in a rage when the stenographer on hand refused to take his obscenity out of the record. And then there's the tale of Orlando Magic coach Stan Van Gundy, who certainly got enough on his mind with uh, Dwight Howard's presumed defection from the team. But Van Gundy told reporters that David Stern and the NBA does not allow dissenting opinions. That was a mistake, because the commissioner responded, well, we won't be hearing from him for the rest of the season. And he then said of Van Gundy, I I see somebody whose team isn't performing, whose star player was suspended, who seems to be fraying. My goodness, who's really fraying here? It sounds like David Stern is fraying. Now, most fans could care less about Stern's attitude. But his state of mind is actually a problem for the entire sport of basketball and for all the fans out there as well. If he's not willing to negotiate in a way that shows respect 
then he, there likely will not be a season in 2011. Stern is pursuing a strategy similar to the one that NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell has adopted. You demand wage cuts by claiming financial hardship, and then you offer players at best a limited look at the books. But Stern's demands extend even further. I mean, we could be talking about a hard salary cap. We could be talking about a franchise tag that bind players to their teams. We could be talking about the evisceration of what amounts to free agency in the sport. And this is something that I think Billy Hunter and the NBA Players Association is going to have a real problem with, which is how do you draw the line against somebody who doesn't seem to know where the line is? I think we need to tell David Stern that he is practicing his own version of the extreme austerity we've seen governors pushing throughout the country. But just as there are no schools without teachers, no fire stations without firefighters, there is no league without the players. No one buys an NBA ticket to watch David Stern. This seems to be a reality that he's forgotten, no matter how many bodies he may have buried. This is PPI, breaking news, in-depth coverage, unparalleled access to professional athletes, pro player insiders, with your host, Dave Zion. Get more unparalleled access to pro athletes directly from the source. Tune in next week for another fresh edition of the show or anytime at ProPlayerInsiders.com.